Welcome, welcome to Jesus Image Sunday night. Uh, what a treat it is to be in the house of the Lord together. If, if you're wondering who on earth I am, I'm a, a six foot five, ginger haired, red faced Englishman that lives in California. My name's Dave, and uh, we're pastors at Bethel. And we've had the overwhelming privilege of coming to the pastors' conference these last few days. And it's just been such a rich, glorious experience in the presence of God. And thank you to Michael and Jess. We're so honored to be here. It's so wonderful to be in a place where God rests. Amen. So as we go into worship tonight, oh, hi, Jesus. I, um, I had Psalm 100 come to mind, one of, a, one of my favorite psalms. And often I think about entering into, into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And hopefully you all know that well. But the, the part that stood out to me tonight, and I'm, asking, I'm going to ask you to do something with me as we go into worship. And hopefully you will, otherwise it's going to be very awkward. But Psalm 100 begins like this. It says this, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Wow, I'm in the right place. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. We give you praise, God. We enter into your house, great King. You are worthy of our praise, great King. Father, tonight we have come to worship you. We have come to adore you. We have come to exalt you, to magnify your name. Come and be among us as we lift you up. Would you be enthroned on our praises? We say you are welcome in this place and we love you so much. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.
so good to me. So, so good. You are so, so very good.
So here I am to worship you. 
Just take a moment and just praise the Lord. 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 All worship. All worship. I came. All praise to Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Be exalted in the earth. Let your name be high and lifted over all the earth. Let your glory fill all the earth. Let your glory fill. Right now we're asking, let your glory fill Orlando. Let, be, let this city be full of the glory of the Lord. Oh, glory of God, come. Glory of God, come. Rest.
sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To Him sits on the Yeah, I'm gonna
Jesus, be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. To you be all power. To you be all power. All might. All majesty, Jesus. All might. All wisdom. All wealth. All splendor is yours, Lord. We ascribe to you the glory due your name tonight. We ascribe to you the glory that is due your name tonight. We ascribe the worth that is due your name tonight.
Let an unceasing sound arise. Let an unceasing cry arise, Lord Jesus. Let an unceasing, unceasing song of praise begin to erupt 
in this land. Let it erupt in this land. A sustained praise for the glory of the living God in this land. A sustained praise pouring forth, going out, reaching out. Let it rise in our homes, Lord Jesus. Let it arise when we arise in the morning. Let it arise in midday. Let it arise in the afternoon. Oh, let it arise in the evening to you. Let it even arise out of our sleep. Let it unceasing praise to the glory of the living God begin to rise on the earth like never before. Let a praise begin to rise on the earth like never before. Jesus, come. Spirit and the bride say, come. Root of Jesse, eternal Son. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We cry. Come, Lord Jesus. 
thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you.
hear your people calling. We can feel the spirit moving. And we say, come, come and split the sky wide open. Can you hear your people calling? We can feel the spirit moving. And we say, come. Yeah, we say, come. Yeah, we say, come. Lord, we say, come. We cry, come, Lord Jesus, come. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Root of Jesse, eternal Son, come, Lord Jesus.
again just again Decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No where the boundaries are extended in the depths of our hearts, right here. Right here. This is where you say to your soul, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. This is when the Lord responds and carries us If I were you, I'd purpose right now that we've only just begun. That's what I would do. I'd let the deep respond now. From the depths of your spirit, the depths of your spear just get lost tonight yes we do need you Jesus there's nowhere to go when Jesus comes nowhere to go psalms, hymns and spiritual songs From your innermost being will flow rivers, 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 living water. It's what he promised. It's what he promised. It's what he promised, rivers, living water. Just love him. That's all you've got to do right now is just love Him. Just love Him. And let Him love you back, and then love Him back, and let Him love you back, and love Him back. And love Him back, and let Him love you. Mm-hmm. Making melody. Making melody, making melody. Mm, living epistles. Let him put you on now. Yield to the Holy Ghost, yield to the Holy Ghost. And everything this river touches comes to life. It comes to life. 
Yes, it does. We're just ankle deep right now. We're ankle deep. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. There's always more in Jesus. There's always more in Jesus. Let him give you a limp tonight. Refuse your dignity. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, precious Lamb of God, fill us, great baptizer, fill us, deep calling unto thee, close your eyes and forget about everything now, it's just Jesus, just Jesus in you. Let his river carry you. And I'll ascend to the high place, says the Lord. And there you'll suck honey from the rock. Come up here. I'll show you great and mighty things. This is the upward call in Christ. Refuse Ishmael right now. Just refuse Ishmael. Refuse an average meeting. Refuse it. Cling to your bridegroom. Choir, get lost. Just forget about the congregation choir. Wave after wave, deep calleth unto deep, as waves billowing, at the sound of thy many waterfall. At the sound of thy many waterfall. Wave after wave after wave. No one like you, Lord. None beside you. None in the heavens, none on the earth, wave after wave, the sound of thy many waterfalls. One thing is needed, just one thing is needed. Just one thing is needed. Only, only one thing is needed. He'll bring the dead to life. Full of glory. Extend thy ten pegs in his presence tonight. There's more. If you want to have more, you can. You can. You can.
melodies if you don't have words just to make melodies they come first usually He's the King of Glory. He's the King of Glory. He's the King of Glory. Righteous and pure. Majestic in all your way. Yes, you are. Majestic in all your way. Greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And holy is His name. Greatly to be praised. Worthy is the land slain for the foundation of the world. Wave after wave carries us along. He carries us along. Tide still water, green pastures. This is life, it's life, it's life, it's life, it's life. Life eternal. He is life eternal. drink this water, you'll never thirst again. This is how the world dies to us right here. David said, my cup runneth over. Or the original translation says, you've intoxicated me with wine from your cup. Taste tonight, taste and see that the Lord is good. Holy is the Lord. Holy is His name. And He's greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Oh, the wonder of Jesus. The beauty of the Lamb. The righteous one. The holy one. The lowly one. Jesus. 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 Your name, O Lord, is as an ointment poured forth. 
Would you put his name just on your lips tonight? And the very fragrance, the ointment of the Lord will fill his house. That's what he promised. Jesus. There's something about that man. Something about that man. Like, unlike any other name. Did our hearts not burn within us? Hmm. Hallelujah, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, to the Blessed One. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Bless you, Jesus. Jess, Stephanie, can you pray for Ben and Dave? Jesse, you too. Just keep ministering to the Lord. Come upon them tonight, Lord. the substance of your presence rest upon these two men Let the light of your presence shine through them all the weariness goes river of your spirit go right through them tonight every pastor in the room just worship Jesus and he'll fill you tonight he'll fill you with his spirit Lord, fill our whole team tonight. They've given you so much. Fill our whole team. Our whole team. 
fill the worship team. Fill Jer and I. Fill us all. Well, who are we without you? How we need your presence. Fill the choir. Fill Joel and every musician. Fill our families. Fill the sick. Burn out every disease. life eternal. Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. I openly and joyfully acknowledge your great wisdom, that you have hidden these things, these spiritual truths from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants, to new believers, to those seeking God's will and purpose. Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except the Father. And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son deliberately reveals his will to him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace, and I will give you rest refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. If anyone needs just a fresh touch from the Lord, everyone could say they need a fresh touch. But I think those of you who are like deeply weary in your souls, why don't you just lift your hands? I'm just going to ask the Lord just to rest on you. Hmm. Oh Lord, come with you refreshing as we wait upon you tonight. Come, I pray that the wind of God, I've been feeling this air circulating. I know it's the fans, but I've just been reminded of how he, he comes and he mounts us up on wings like eagles. So I thank you for your wind, and I pray right now that you would refresh in the deep, deep places. And Lord, we lay down the yokes. We, we, we lay down the burdens, and we take up your yoke. We yoke ourselves to you again. Lord, all the things that are too heavy for us to carry, we lay them down. We yoke ourselves to you. One more scripture. To whom will you compare me, that I would be his equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these heavenly bodies. The one who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name. Because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is missing. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become tired or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding, and he gives strength to the weary. So we just receive the strength of the Lord tonight. He gives strength to the weary. To him who has no might, he increases power. Even youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power. And they will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising towards the sun. And they will run and not become weary. They will run and not become weary. And they will walk and not grow tired. Lord, we stand upon your word tonight. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your promise. And tonight, our eyes are on you. We wait for you, knowing that that is where the wind is. That is where the breath is. That is where the renewal is. That is where the strength that comes. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Why don't you grab uh, a seat if you want, or you can just chat with somebody and just say hello to them real, real briefly. If you're being ministered to by the Lord, you stay right put and don't move. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence. Um, tonight, I'm just going to talk simply, guys, a little bit about worship. We'll see what the Lord does, but um, I just felt the Lord, honestly, it's one of those nights where I could go 5,000 different directions, so I'm going to stick with what the Lord, uh, I sense the Lord give me, 
um, which is a lot of just very basic practical instruction on worship. <laughs> hey, little man. <laughs> what a boy. Thank you, Lord. Um, I, uh, I was so moved this morning by Pastor Tommy Reed's message. Um, coming from a man who didn't know what to say, somehow he managed to communicate the message that trumps all other messages um, on the beauty and the centrality of Jesus. Um, yeah, truly. God is building a house of worship here. A place of his glory, a dwelling place. And we urgently need houses of worship in this hour. I was just so moved, Michael, thank you. I literally ran completely out of gas at the end of that worship set. <laughs> I did had no idea where to go. And I was just like, I don't know where to go. So I'm gonna go on my face. <laughs> and, and I'm so grateful. Um, it was just like, oh, I'm so grateful for the body. I'm so grateful. Guys, worship is never a one man or one woman show. Like if we wanna go into the deeper realms of God, it, it, is a, it is a thing that the body does together, all the parts functioning together. And I was just literally just being ministered to as he was just leading us even deeper. I'm so grateful for you, Michael. Happy birthday, by the way. Uh, yeah. And I've been privileged, guys, to be a part of multiple worship movements um, in my life. And I, I just, in my heart, I just wanted to pass on whatever wisdom I could pass on because um, they're the most precious things in the world to me. And I do know how much warfare surrounds them. I know all the different things, the rise and fall um, of, of so many. And I, I just, I want to release as much as I possibly can for the days really ahead for you guys, because this thing is just beginning. And I do want to talk about worship, but specifically I want to talk about priesthood yes. and what it means to be a priest to the Lord. And many times when we talk about worship, I, I know there's so much focus that goes on worship teams and leaders and um, sound production, logistics, um, all that stuff, essentially everything that's happening from the stage. But hear me, I have a tremendous value for worship leaders. I am one. <laughs> So I don't devalue my role and what I bring to the table. I'm, I'm, I'm a tremendous value for them. Um, when it comes to building a house of worship, I believe, though, that they get a little too much attention, um, along with teams and everything else. And tonight, I, I wanted to actually talk about your guys' role. I want to talk about what you bring to the table. I want to talk about your responsibility and your holy assignment and privilege as a company of royal priests. Scripture says that he's enthroned upon the praises of his people. He builds his throne on the praises of his people. And I, you know, I'll just say this. I, I began to discover the power of the people when I, when I first began to uh, attend Bethel Church and I shared a little bit of my journey at the pastor's conference. But when I first started going to Bethel, um, Oh, it's too long of a story to go into, but I had been leading worship as a full-time itinerant, on-the-road kind of worship leader for two years, and I, I had this fluke thing happen where I had a radio single take off, and it threw me into this, thrust me into this strange world called CCM, which is Christian contemporary music, and I, and I gave it my best shot to be a Christian artist and all of that, and I realized that was not my lane. I was no good at that. I didn't know how to do any of that, any of that stuff, and it was like two years of miserably failing, and um, I mean, literally failing um, in, in so many different ways. And oh man, I could go into so many lessons, um, but I'm so grateful for that sifting because it led me back to a firm foundation, which is this. It's like, I, I, when I came to Bethel, I, didn't, I thought I was going to the farthest, most remote place on the earth. And I was gonna go be with the wild, crazy people who didn't care about anything but his presence. And I thought, I'm just gonna go there and die there. I'm gonna be a doorkeeper. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I have no real hope for my life. I literally had no hope for my life. I felt like, oh, that was it. That was my one shot, and it went, and there it goes. But all I knew at that time is like I was going to come back, and, and I just wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. And all I wanted to do was just be among the worshiping people. And obviously, that's not where, where the journey ended. But I tell you what, you know, I'd come from 
two years of, of bringing everything that I possibly could to the table. And at that point in time in my life, guys, I was very familiar with the power of a song. I knew the power of a song. I don't know how many worship leaders here have ever been in those sets that are challenging and very difficult, and you look down at your set list and you see, great are you, Lord. And all of a sudden, hope rises in your heart. <laughs> and you're like, if we can just get to that bridge, you know, all the earth will shout your prayers. You know, you just know, you know the power of a song. You know what it can do. And I was very familiar with that. I was very familiar with the power of a consistent band of excellent musicians. I knew very well. I, I, I literally sought them out and found them, and I was very familiar with what they could do, what they could bring to the table. I was familiar with the power of audio excellence. Oh, what a glorious thing that is. Any, you know, also worship leaders, if you look back and you see your favorite front of house engineer, you're just like, oh, it's going to translate tonight. And what we're doing up here is actually going to sound like that out there. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Like, I'm very familiar with the power. You guys have no idea how much can go wrong in between here and there. Those speakers right there. There's a lot that can go wrong. Um, but I was familiar with that. I brought my own guy on the road just to help it translate. I was familiar with the power of my voice, it's familiar with the power of what my anointing um, could typically lead a room into over the course of an hour. And so when I came to Bethel, the thing that really puzzled me is that worship had such a superior, weighty, sweet power to it that was so far beyond what, what I had experienced like in my two years of going after this thing. And the thing was, it had nothing to do with a superior leader. I mean, they had great leaders, guys, but it wasn't a superior leadership. It wasn't a superior sound. In fact, it was much worse. It wasn't a superior facility. They were in a gymnasium, and the sound was not great. Um, it's come a long way. Let's just say that. It wasn't a superior band. They were all quite uh, strong, but there were nights that were so rough. And I just began to go through a list in my brain, just kind of deducting what is the difference maker here? Like, what is it? And this process was accelerated when I began to lead worship there because I literally felt like I became 10 times the worship leader that I did before. And it's really hard to explain, but there was such a hunger for Jesus in that room, such a unity of heart and purpose um, that it was like pulling a level of worship out of me that I had never experienced before. And I knew that I had nothing to do with what was coming out of me. <laughs> I know because I'd beaten my head up against a wall so many nights of worship, I knew better than to know like, oh my gosh, I'm just particularly gifted right now. Like I knew it was nothing to do with that. There was something else that was happening. And again, I, guys, I'm in no way trying to diminish the role of the Holy Spirit right now. He is ultimately responsible for all of this. But God has written partnership into everything that we do. And we, the people of God, when we step into alignment with this purpose, his kingdom breaks in and everything changes. So our understanding of how to be obedient and how to be partners with this purpose plays such a significant role in how the story unfolds. And I I went on this journey of trying to understand what were some of the things. And here's just a couple of revelations, guys. Um, I'm still a little bit woozy here. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Um, I began to see how a culture of worship operates. And it's honestly, it's a, it's a lot like an ecosystem. If you don't know what an ecosystem is, it's a very complex network or it's a very interconnected system. It has lots of different parts, but all of those parts need to be healthy in order to thrive. And it honestly requires heaven's wisdom to simply, not just to simply build a culture of worship, but to steward one properly. And I, I found that they can be incredibly sensitive, a lot like a rainforest. Now let's just say... Um, for instance, let's say you're in the rainforest and you really don't like this obnoxious bird, so you're like, we're going to drive this bird out of this forest. It's really pesty and annoying. It's a pesty, pesky. Um, anyway, it seems like a small and significant bird in that rainforest initially, and when you drive it out, you don't think anything of it, and probably nothing is going to happen for at least a year or so, but all of a sudden something begins to happen, and all of a sudden the trees begin to die. And when those trees begin to die, you begin to discover that, that this small and significant bird actually was responsible for managing and reducing a certain beetle population that preyed on trees. And when you took that bird out, what you inadvertently did is you contributed to the uninhibited growth of that pest and ultimately it began to take out trees. And a lot of times that's how we discover 
how a culture of worship works. A lot of times we discover it a little too late uh, in so many different ways, but every part is significant, guys. It's how God designed the body too. I really wanna go into this. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna read some scripture tonight. So it says this, Corinthians 12, it says, just as the body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. <laughs> It would, not, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? Oh, if we could understand this. If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? You know, and wonder what part of the body carries a sense of smell in the body of Christ. I, I, I do want to know sometimes where they are. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. And if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. It's so much like the body. A culture of worship is so much like the body. It's a diverse ecosystem. And so when I came into this strange, strange world, because honestly, um, I thought I attended a charismatic church until I came to a charismatic church. And then I realized I knew nothing. I was a thoroughly evangelical church in comparison to a truly charismatic church. But what I began to notice is I began to notice all the different parts of the ecosystem. I noticed the flaggers. I noticed the dancers. I noticed the painters. I noticed the musicians. I noticed the choirs, the leaders, the sound and production team. I noticed the intercessors. You know, can I just, can I do this? I, I felt led by the Lord to do this. Guys, if you know that you're an intercessor and you have been, which, which means I don't mean that you envision yourself to be one, I mean that you contend in prayer on a regular basis for hours and hours in a week and you contend for your church, you contend for leadership, you contend for this nation, can I just have you stand? Yeah. Yeah, ho hold on, we're gonna honor them properly. I... I just, I have to say, I literally started writing this and I just welled up with tears. No, 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 please stay standing. Back on your feet. I, I, we have to honor you. We have to honor you tonight. Yeah. Just stay there. For every true intercessor, this is the most uncomfortable thing in the world, which is why we, we really want you to endure this. You have largely probably led a thankless life but you have valiantly and secretly carried the burdens of the Lord, the burdens of Jesus with him in prayer, and only heaven knows your impact. And only heaven knows what glory you have released and what evil you have prevented. Um, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Continue and pray. Pray for us. Pray. Pray. It's making all the difference in the world, and you can be seated. Thank you. I just wanted to honor you. I noticed all the parts, and I started to have value, guys. I could go into Ralph the Flagger, who was one of my favorite flaggers in the world. He was no ordinary flagger. He was not, he was not this guy. Like, there were times when it got into, like, real heavy warfare intercession where he would, he would do, like, this spear-like move, uh, and he would throw his flag, literally, uh, as a spear, and it was... <laughs> 
Uh, it was glorious, honestly. And then I found out a little bit more about Ralph. Um, he uh, ended up getting mouth cancer and he couldn't talk very well. But he was such a precious man. He was a concrete artist and he had gone all over the world. He'd done all of like Disney World abroad. He'd done all their concrete stuff and he was the one at their prayer chapel and in all of things, he laid the concrete and he was telling me as he laid the concrete, the very concrete, he would just praying over it as he's like shaping it and forming it and he was an artist. Every room in his house had a different name for an encounter with the Lord. Like, and I just realized like, oh, I am unearthing an ecosystem. So much of an ecosystem, guys, so much of what creates houses and glorious moments of worship like this are these people that lay down their lives in secret. It's at a heart level that a house of worship, honestly, is initially cultivated and built. And man, every time I would discover it, I honestly wanted to get and kiss his feet. I, I literally did. I'm like, oh, you, you were the one. You were the one that created this watering hole for my soul to come back to life. You were the one who poured your life into this. Oh, and I could go through countless story after story after story. But I just began to look at the people. One of the first things I did when I came to Bethel, I just looked at it and I, I just watched the people. I didn't necessarily initially watch the band or the stage. I just looked around at the people because I'd never seen a group of people respond to the Lord like that. And I was like, who trained you? Where did you come from? Like, how did you get here? And all my years, I've been looking for these people. And here you are in the most random, obscure place um, in California. How? I honestly, I was so curious. And then as I went on that journey with Bethel, guys, I found out that Bill, Bill was the reason. And Bill didn't just train worship teams and worship leaders. He taught a whole congregation of their importance, of their priesthood, and how to minister to the Lord. He knew that it takes much, much more than an anointed, gifted worship leader and worship band to move into the greater realms of the glory of God. You need the unity of the whole congregation. And you need to understand, just as much as worship teams, worship teams do, as to how to steward a moment of his glory. Bill used to always, in his very gentle way, kind of put the fear of God in anyone um, during a holy moment of worship. And he would just say, you know, when the Lord comes in strong power, he says, always somebody has to do something. He's like the biggest enemy of greater depths of glory and the Lord increasing is nervous energy. <laughs> he talked about the Mount of Transfiguration and he talked about Peter. <clears throat> Sweet Peter, who is the lesson for so many different things in our lives. <laughs> I, 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 I adore <laughs> him, honestly. But he was just like, when the glory of God comes, Peter's like, let's, can we build you three booths? And basically, can we stay up here forever? And I love that scripture literally adds, and he did not know what he was saying. Uh, it's just one of those things. But he just would talk about it. He just said, no, the biggest enemy to those moments is just, we do not know how to steward. Someone's got to do something and it actually, those, one of the things that's so interesting about the glory is it can be very sensitive sometimes to any of that, those kinds of outbursts. And then all of a sudden it lifts. And he would train a group of people. And oh my gosh, so many different moments where we were 20 minutes in and there was such a hushed reverence in the room and no one dared be that person. <laughs> and we were able to journey deeper and deeper. And Ah, he was such a good trainer. We need that kind of wisdom in the house of the Lord today because houses of worship, guys, houses of his presence, they're never built on bands and worship leaders or stages. If they are, they will most certainly fail. Guys, houses of worship for me, and this is just me sharing my own personal convictions on that they're first and foremost built of living stones and the chief cornerstone being the living stone himself, and that's Jesus. But there are other living stones that he is taking and that he's building up into a spiritual house. Houses of worship are built upon people. They're built upon a priesthood of people who will come week in and week out and minister faithfully to the Lord. How many of you guys, they're not just visiting tonight, but this is your home church? Okay. In a weird way, guys, I'm just doing family business and I'm an outsider, so it's super strange. But here I am conducting family, <laughs> you know, conducting family business because really who I'm talking to you, and it applies to everyone, but really who I'm talking to tonight is, is, is you guys who have joined your heart to this house. Here's the thing about foundations. Foundations aren't visible. They're rarely the focus of attention. 
Nobody walks into a house, guys, and goes, oh my, what a beautiful foundation you have. <laughs> Nobody does. They talk about the decor, they talk about the windows, the rugs, the carpeting, the furniture, everything else but the foundation, but the concrete block that's underneath their feet. But does that make the, com the, the, the foundation any less important? No, it supports what? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. The only time you notice the foundation is when something's gone really, really wrong. And all of a sudden, nobody feels safe, and you're like, I think the roof is sagging, and uh, we should probably not be here. That's the only time people start noticing foundations. Foundations get virtually no attention, but they are everything. They support everything. So I just want to speak to you guys. I want to speak to the priesthood tonight, and I want to charge you and commission you because it's important that you understand your value. You are integral to what is happening here. Yeah. You really, really are. Guys, you would not believe how unanointed of a worship leader I am when no one's worshiping with me. <laughs> I don't care if it's Stephanie Gretzinger. You'd be amazed how unanointed Stephanie Gretzinger can sound if people are apathetic towards Jesus. I'm not saying she's not anointed. She is in any, any way. I'm not trying to take away at all. I'm just saying I have... I know exactly how far I can go, and it's not very far. I'm very aware of my handicaps. Even Jesus, it's so mysterious, he was handicapped. It says that when he came to his people and they took offense at him, he, he marveled at their unbelief. It said he could do very little in their midst. He said he could heal only a few people. Somehow, like our response, the way that we posture our hearts really enables us to move into greater realms or completely shut something down. We are very, very handicapped unless we have a group of people who will unite their hearts with us. And then honestly, guys, something unstoppable <laughs> begins to happen. You know, so many people, there's so much common. Oh my gosh, I just love that worship leader. They're so anointed. And again, I'm not bagging on worship leaders here. They're, I love them and they're anointed. But the thing I begin to notice more than anything else, guys, is when I listen to those anointed moments, I just go like, yeah, I hear, I hear the anointing of the leader. But I'm like, do you hear how anointed that room is? That room is so full of anointing. And that is what is like, literally, I remember like, again, I've shared it. It's just like pooling worship out of me. <laughs> I remember leading a Bethel was like this. It was like, I've spent my entire life just trying to catch a wave, just trying to, just to get up. I had never experienced riding a wave before because people were never there enough to allow that. It was just like, oh. and so I literally thought for so long that, that, uh, and again, maybe weird analogy, but it was just like, you paddle, you paddle, you paddle, and then you feel a wave, and you're like, oh, finally got one. And I had no idea, I'd never ridden one. There was never one that was powerful enough to actually ride. And what I began to realize in these moments of worship is I had no idea how to ride a wave. So I would catch one, and I'd be like, my job is over, and I would wipe out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I think this is just supposed to be beginning. I had to learn how to ride a wave, not just catch one. First Peter, chapter two. If you've got a Bible, I want you to turn there. I think it's important to read it. Chapter two, verse four, it says this. It says, come to him as the living stone which men rejected and threw away, but which is choice and precious in the sight of God. You believers, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house for a holy and dedicated priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in Scripture. Behold, I am laying in Zion a chosen stone, a precious, honored cornerstone, and he who believes in him will never be disappointed. This precious value, then, is for you who believe, but for those who disbelieve, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. For they stumble because they disobey the word of God, and to this they were also appointed. But you... Are a chosen race. You are a chosen race. You are 
a royal priesthood. You are a consecrated nation. You are a special people for God's own possession. Guys, God is zealous for a people who will be his possession. He set that in motion like that has been his burning desire from the beginning of time, that he would be, he would have a people for his own possession. So that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness and into marvelous light. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but you have received mercy. Guys, I'm not going to go too deep tonight. But I just want to stress a couple of things. Every time we come to worship, it's important to keep two things in mind. I try and always keep these two things in mind. Number one, you're coming before Jesus. That's the most important thing we can realize, the living stone. He's the king of all kings. He's the bright and morning star. He's not the Jesus who simply humbled himself and came to earth. He is the glorified Jesus, the one that John saw in the book of Revelation. And I just have to read it because uh, this is something we have to keep at the forefront. He says, then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me. And after turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, I saw someone like the son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching to his feet with a golden sash wrapped around his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, glistening white like snow. And his all seeing eyes were flashing like a flame of fire, piercing into my being. His feet were like burnished white hot bronze, refined in the furnace. And his voice was like powerful, like the sound of many waters. And in his hand, he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword of judgment. And his face reflecting the majesty and the Shekinah glory was like the sun shining in all its power at midday. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And he placed his right hand on me. Oh, Jesus. He says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the ever living one. I died, but see, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and Hades and the realm of the dead. This, this is Jesus. This is the one we come before. And whenever I'm struggling, whenever I'm wrestling in a set, whenever I'm, I'm so earthly bound, I'm like, oh, Lord, give me a vision of Jesus. There is nothing that so lifts my heart into praise than that vision of Jesus right there. The second thing I keep in mind is this. I am just one priest, one priest, and I may be charged with the leadership of a certain moment, but I am not just a singer of songs, guys. I'm not here to just try and rally a group of people to sing songs. I am simply one priest amongst a company of royal priests who all have the same mandate, who all have the same responsibility, who all have the same privilege that I do to minister to the Lord. Like, it's the difference between, like, you know, sometimes I feel like you know, if you're a teacher and you're used to teaching students, you operate in one way. But when you understand, when you're a teacher and you're actually beginning to instruct, you're being invited to instruct or lead something with other teachers, that's a totally different way of approaching something. You don't talk down to them. You, 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 like, you, you understand you're on the same playing field and you may be the one holding the microphone, but you realize that I'm simply one priest amongst a company of royal priests. And there's something, guys, the, the more, honestly, just worship leaders, hear me for a little bit. If you will begin to understand more and more about priesthood, and you, the more you understand about priesthood, the more you understand what the calling and, and the identity and the authority that, that your whole congregation is meant to walk into, it will change how you lead them. <laughs> I don't find any mention of worship leaders in heaven. I, I don't know if they're there. So maybe some of more, more insight can pull them out from me, but I don't see any worship leaders in heaven. The only thing that I hear and see of worship, there's some, there's some heart playing, there's some worshiping and ministering, but there's always multitude, just it's a multitude of voices. Like heaven is a multitude of voices that are giving glory to God. We are a holy priesthood. You know, honestly, Pastor Tommy, read this verse in Obadiah, and I was rocked by it. Like I, I felt like I've been meditating it all day. 
It says, but on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there, sh and there shall be holiness. And that the connection between the two that he began to pull out is like there's not enough deliverance because there's not enough holiness. When we begin to understand, guys, here's the thing. I have I've been on this quest. Uh, I just want to see these kingdoms in conflict. I think we need to see these kingdoms in conflict. Derek Prince said, you know, there's one thing. We need to see these kingdoms in conflict. Because when you see these kingdoms in conflict, oh my gosh, all of a sudden the perspective that comes to you. And I think one of the things the enemy loves to, to do is just literally hide and mask, you know, hide behind so many different things. But I really feel like there's greater clarity that's going to be coming. And it's going to be coming rapidly. And we're going to need a wisdom for deliverance. But guys, let me tell you this, and I said it a little bit. Yeah, there's no binding the strong man if you're bound by, by, <laughs> by the strong man. There actually has to be a measure of holiness that begins to fill the body of Christ before they begin to walk in authority again, you know, in, in, in that regard. And I really do feel like when we begin to understand your life of holiness matters. A holy and dedicated priesthood. <laughs> dedicated devotion. I, I always think of the early church. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. How many knows it's glorious to, that you can be devoted to the breaking of bread together. I find that to be particularly glorious to me, but I love that they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, which is the same as being devoted to the word of God and to the fellowship, to the meeting together, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. There's something about devotion, guys, that God is beginning to teach the body of Christ, and I don't have enough time to go into that. I just want to keep moving through here. Right and acceptable sacrifices. Guys, I just want to say this. When the Lord begins to visit a room, I'm convinced that it's because someone in that room is beginning to offer a right and acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. Sometimes it's, you know, pure mercy of the Lord, but I really do believe that he responds to right and acceptable sacrifices. And sometimes that's not even necessarily coming from the stage. I would always hope it to be coming from the stage, but it's not always going to be coming from the stage. Sometimes it's just someone in the room is beginning to offer a right and acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. <laughs> Later on in verse 9, Peter goes on to specify what these holy and pleasing acts are. He says, so that you may proclaim. Everyone say proclaim. The excellencies. The Amplified Bible says, the wonderful deeds, virtues, and perfections of him who called you. The word proclaim, guys, means to declare officially and publicly. A proclamation is not silent. A proclamation is public. It is something that is demonstrated, it is indicated clearly. You can't proclaim something without some measure of confidence and faith. It's verbalized. It's authoritative in nature. And our songs today, they are our proclamations. They are our... Uh, you know, I was listening to this guy, his name's Phil Driscoll. You guys ever heard of Phil Driscoll? He's this. <laughs> he said this, he says, a polite praise is an illegal praise. <laughs> it's illegal. You don't get to look at the glory of God and go. <laughs> it's not a British praise. No. <laughs> oh. All my UK friends, here's the deal. There is a lion in Britain, and there is a roar in the UK. <laughs> and there is an authority, and there is a courage, and it is rising up. Polite praise is a legal praise. Sometimes, guys, you have no idea how much constraint I operate under on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening when I'm just like, the glory of God is here. When will it be met with the response? When will it be met with a wholehearted response? Not a polite response, not of like, oh yeah, like a, just 
to proclaim the excellencies. I have a passion for our gathered times, but priesthood does not stop when the service stops, and proclaiming does not end when the song does. Not at all, guys. The way that you speak to your neighbor, the way that you interact in your everyday lives, the way that you raise your children, how you are around your house, all of this demonstrates priesthood. All of this, your whole life is a proclamation. And guys, when you're part of a house like this, you've joined yourself to this family. Um, You are an integral part. And I I say this because I just, I really do. I want you to understand the weight of your life. I want you to know your importance. I want you to know your value in heaven's eyes. Because chances are you may never be publicly acknowledged or recognized. You won't get a plaque for all the breakthroughs. You know, the intercession and praise you offer to the room contributed to at least the sight of heaven. But you need to understand just how important you are and your responsibility and the accountability that comes with that. Your life matters. Your life of prayer matters. Your history with God matters. It all creates something glorious. It's all moving us towards this. And And here's something maybe even stranger to say, but because of what God is doing in this house, this is a sobering thing and a glorious thing, but he's touching the nations of the earth. And the impact of your personal priestly life of devotion means that it will also touch the nations of the earth. It's a significant thing. The way that you steward your heart, the way that you guard your purity, all has tremendous impact. And I just wanna charge you guys, for the sake of what God is doing, and that it may continue to advance in the earth. I'm just gonna finish off the second Peter passage. It says, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits. And I'm just gonna close here. I, I just, I want to ask you guys to charge you to contend for your place here in this house, for your ministry here in this house, not in an entitled way, do not hear me that, in utter humility, but you need to know your importance because here's the thing that happens. Guys, moves of God are messy. Moves of God are messy. Moves of God will draw a lot of people. (laughs) Moves of God complicate logistics. Moves of God create jammed parking lots. <laughs> Moves of God wreak havoc sometimes on childcare. <laughs> no, you really have to understand me here. <laughs> I see so much offense. Can I just be vulnerable with you guys? Um, you know, there was a time at Bethel where I was in a pretty raw place. And I remember coming to worship in a sanctuary that was overflowing as it was every single time. And uh, the deep challenges that happen when the world starts showing up at your door. And, and I'm sitting there on the wall. It was the only place that I had left. And I'm sitting there on the wall and I'm in a raw place before the Lord and I, my heart is cracked open. And finally, finally, I was just beginning to meet with God and I put out my hands and I just began to weep and cry out to the Lord. And all of a sudden I feel this hand on my shoulder and it's a sweet usher. And he just said, sir, I'm so sorry. You cannot be in the aisle. This is a fire hazard. Da, 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 da. I need you to get up and move. And guys, I'm going to tell you something very embarrassing. I did not recover. <laughs> I got so tweaked in my heart. I literally like sat there for two minutes and then I left. I went home. Offense is a crazy, crazy thing that begins to happen. <laughs> I confess that because some of you guys, I know, I, I know in some ways what's coming. I know you're going to be pulling into a parking lot. I know you'll have pulled all your kids together and you'll be in line and, and, and there will be something that begins to happen in your heart that's not pretty and it's not of the Lord. And I just want to equip you for the warfare that is coming when you don't have a parking spot anymore. <laughs> And here's the biggest key to overcome offense. It's called gratitude. 
And when you're walking and you're pulling in and you're like, wow, we're not getting to church for another 20 minutes. And by that time, childcare is going to be completely full and all this different stuff, all this stuff begins to happen. You just give thanks to the Lord in that moment. Oh, what an offering. That right there, guys. Oh my gosh, something's going to explode in the sanctuary. Just you in the parking lot giving thanks because people are so hungry for God that you don't have a parking spot. And you're thanking the Lord. That, oh, thank you, Lord, that people are so hungry for you. That is creating a mess logistically. It is a glorious thing. But thanksgiving wards off offense. It weeds your heart free from offense. And here's where I'm ending. Guys, please do not fall prey to a victim mentality in worship. And most of the time, worship may feel like it's something that's happening to you. You're not the one who picked out the songs um, or the people leading for that matter. Um, and it may be hard to check out. Like, this is just human. It's hard to check out when you're in a different place and you feel like the songs are going a different direction than where your heart is and all those kinds of things. I just encourage you, do not check out. Center yourself in the Lord. I'll tell you this, guys. Persistent hunger and focus on Jesus has the power to turn any worship set around. What Michael did right there, just like honing in and just, Jesus, forget everybody around you. Like he just, that, that right there, I want leaders to know how to, how to do that. I want us to know how to do that without Michael's voice, his beautiful voice, coaching us through it. <laughs> I, I want us to know like, okay, Jer, like, I mean, I'm going to picture Michael's voice in my head from here on out. It's like, focus on Jesus. You know, like, I, I, <laughs> I'm just saying we need to learn how to coach ourselves with that because if we're able to persistently continue to move towards Jesus, even when it doesn't feel like anything's landing or hitting, when we're able to maintain that hunger and that focus, guys, I've seen so many moments, all of a sudden something flips, and all of a sudden you went from this kind of weird world and all of a sudden you're like whoa where, how do we get to glory like all of a sudden we're in glory breathtaking moments of glory guys the, the one night i led for at bethel and the the glory cloud showed up it was actually one of the hardest nights of worship of my life and i literally i was so done I was so done. I'm like, I can't wait for this set to be over. That's literally what was going on in my heart. I can't wait to just go home and lick my wounds and figure out how to come back. You know, like I was so done. And I lifted up a half-hearted prayer. It was pretty half-hearted. And I was just like, we wait for you, God, to come show your glory here today. And I was like, I literally gave up, like almost inside. And I collapsed. And, and then Steph, I think, you know, started leading a song. And then something began to shift in that room. I was at the complete end of myself. <laughs> and we just kept moving deeper. Guys, I love enthusiasm. I love the enthusiasm we start with, but we, what we really need to grow in is a persevering praise. Persevering praise. When we just learn to persevere in praise, something unstoppable begins to happen. And of all the moments I treasure, it's the moments when you guys begin to sing and when you actually begin to lead us without exhortation, spontaneously before the Lord. For me, there is no sweeter sound. It is the only time that I want to karate chop a leader or a musician who thinks that that time is their time. Like, I, that's the only time. I don't get that reaction any other time. But man, but when I feel like, because I feel the violation of it. I feel the violation of it. It's like, all I want to do is like, no, 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 we have to value. There has to be a tremendous value for that voice. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to cry. I don't karate chop anybody, guys. You have to, that's, that's, that's a joke. But it's the one thing that I treasure. And I just like, I, I want worship leaders like, oh, guys, when, when the church finds her voice, <laughs> when she finds her voice, only seek every way to just like, just come under it. Just come under it. Learn how to support it. And honestly, can I just praise the worship team and people here? You guys do this. Like you are, oh, such a gift. You have no idea. It's such a gift. Such a gift. Thank you for drummers who don't overplay. Thank you. Truly, drums particularly are particularly sensitive, I find, in moments. It's like the second a drum comes in, it can either like, it's like such a fragile thing 
and be grateful for musicians who are highly attuned and know how to undergird and support your voice and what the Lord is doing in this moment. All right. Can I just do something real quick? It's okay. Who, who's part of like the stage ministry time on like Sundays and who, who, who is that? Can I just have you guys come up? If you're here, if you're around. Yeah, you guys. I'm pretty sure it's all you. <laughs> I recognize most of your faces. Yeah, get up here. Right. <laughs> yeah, stay right here. You know, um, I just want to charge you guys tonight in a beautiful way. And you don't need this charge. This is more just a a, a thing. I just, it dropped in my spirit. And so I'm just going to lead out and I'm going to take a risk. But I just, um, can I have everyone who's not a part of this church? Not because we don't value and we don't love you. We love you. But I just really want this to be a moment between who is coming to this church. This is your home church. Can you remain standing? And everyone else, would that be okay if you just, yeah, sat down for a little bit? You guys are shepherds, and you carry the heart of a shepherd. And I just want, it's kind of like one of those moments where I just, I want you to look out and see who it is that you're leading right now. And I just want to place some really simple charges on you that you already beautifully do. Hmm. There's all kinds of forms of ministry to the Lord. But one of my favorite ones is that when Jesus asked Peter, he says, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he says, feed my sheep. And he does that three times. He says, feed my sheep. And I I just want to charge you guys, like your ministry to the Lord is very much feeding these here, protecting these, loving these, serving these. And uh, I just want to, just going to read some things over to you guys real quick here. Lord, I thank you for your love. I charge you tonight, beautiful, beautiful Jesus image worship team, to love these voices even above your own. I charge you to love their expression of freedom and praise even above your own. I charge you to love their freedom above your own, to care for their needs above your own, to gladly undertake the holy constraint of love and servitude on their behalf. I had a picture, and the picture I had was the Levitical priest in the River Jordan. And they're the ones that entered the River Jordan before the people of Israel crossed over. And as they entered it, uh, all the waters stopped. But they stood there and they held that ark. They held the ark of the presence until all of the people, the whole entire nation, crossed over into the promised land. And I feel like there's such an act of servitude. You're carrying something weighty and you're standing in the middle of the river and you are, you are holding that ground until all of the people walk over into their destiny, into the land of glory and into that they were, they were born for. And I just, I just had that picture and I bless you to be that priesthood. I bless you and charge you to encourage and exhort them to step into their full authority and identity as royal priests, that you wouldn't be satisfied with some good nights of worship, but until that identity is formed, until that authority has grown to such a degree, there will be something in you that is their champion, that is there for them, and you know exactly when to minister encouragement, when to minister an exhortation, but I bless you. I charge you to honor them. They are the house that the Lord is building. 
I honor you to honor each, I charge you to honor each living stone that the Lord himself is arranging and setting because it is he himself that is building this house. I charge you to be good shepherds. And if you agree to that, say, I will. Amen. Amen. Guys, I just want to charge you guys real quick to honor them, to pray for them. When you see their hearts, guys, here's the deal. Every one of us has low moments. Every one of us has moments of the flesh. Every one of us is in a battle. Sometimes you have no idea. The second you step foot on the stage, it's, there's warfare. Sometimes there's immediate grace, but most of the time it is warfare. And, and, and so many times it is so easy to be the best worship leader in the world on the floor sitting on your chair. And you have all the ideas and you're like, oh my gosh, I did it. You can do that. Or you can begin to posture your heart towards them and begin to pray for them. And when you feel something, guys like, oh, that feels pretty fleshly or this kind of thing, or they're obviously struggling tonight, you know, those kinds of things. Instead of that, go like, oh God, begin to lean in. Begin to undergird them in the spirit. Begin to pray over them. Be, uh, just find any way to point your heart towards them. I tell you what, oh my gosh, such a powerful, powerful thing begins to happen when we begin to do that. So if you will commit to honoring the authority and the placement that God has put in them, to responding in unity of heart, not resisting, not being stubborn, but to responding to the thing that it is that they're attempting to lead people into, to pray for them and posture your heart in unity. Will you just say, I will? I will. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Can we just bless them again, guys? Bless them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to turn it over in just a little bit here, but um, thank you. Thank you for going with me on that journey. It's a little bit half-baked, but I felt it in my heart, and I just wanted to be faithful to the Lord. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we bless your name. We thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you're doing in this house. And I thank you that you are the author and you are the finisher and you are the builder and you're placing every single stone in its appropriate place and you're building a spiritual house. You're building a house of worship here. You're building a dwelling place here, a place for your glory. And we just say, Heavenly Father, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Everything that's in your heart, beyond what we can think, ask, or imagine, Lord, I pray that you would begin to unleash the fullness of what has been the longing in your heart. You burn to see heaven released on earth far more than we even know how to partner with. So we just say, let it come, Lord, let it come. I pray that you would raise up every part of the specific and unique ecosystem, the culture of worship that you've designed here. I pray that every single part would come. I pray for the army that that's yet needed. I pray for the, for, for all, all, all. I pray for every single, I pray for the intercessors that have yet to come. I pray for the musicians that have yet to come. I pray for a host, a host of people to come who are called to this house to labor. And we say for your glory and for the glory of your name. Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Joel is so faithful. And, uh, and, um, because he plays keys, sometimes he's not in like, those groups. But, Jerry, would you just lead a prayer? And I'd like our, why don't you lead it? I don't want us to stretch our hands towards Joel. Oh, I have such an anointing on you, Joel. <laughs> Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this man. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this man. I thank you the way heaven flows through his fingers. And I just bless, I bless right now all the melodies of heaven, that heaven would come pouring through you, Joel, pouring through you, pouring through you. I ask right now that you would be baptized afresh and full of the Holy Spirit in crazy, crazy ways, that an anointing and a fire from heaven would begin to fill and fall on you in a fresh way. I ask for songs, I just feel like so much you carry. Let the songs and melodies of heaven flow through you. And I, ble- I just feel the pleasure of the Father over you so strongly. I feel his delight in the way that you worship and the way that you've responded. There's such a purity in you, Joel. There's such a purity, and we bless that in Jesus' name. We bless it. I'm going to have Kathy pray over you. Father, I thank you for this precious young man. I thank you for the pockets of glory I've experienced just listening and worshiping with him. I pray that you'd keep the fire, the fire of worship burning in those hands all the days of his life. Oh God, (sighs) never let it go out. Thank you, Lord, that he's here, that he stayed. Thank you, God. And just pray that, Joel, that you'll sense the Holy Spirit playing through your hands all the time. That those moments when you know it's not you and it's him moving those fingers and it's him speaking those chords, calling those chords in your ears. I pray that'll never stop, but just increase, increase, increase in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Joel, we just thank you for your service. You lay your life down all the time. And I just want to just say I see it and I acknowledge it. And I have never watched someone with such humility just serve. I don't know. There's something so special. And it's a a pleasing aroma. It's not just your playing, Joel. It's the posture of your heart before the Lord. You'll just play pads for 45 minutes and you will just do everything. And the Lord is just so pleased with the posture of your heart. And we bless you now in the name of the Lord. (laughs) Bless you. I'd like our our team to come line up and face the crowd. Joel, you too. You have something to give. Our worship team, come. Dancers too. Musicians. Can we move those stands? Are you grateful for Jair's ministry to the body of Christ? Got it? How many uh, worship leaders you're serving your church or ministry or you're a musician or a dancer? How many of you are here tonight? Okay. I'm going to ask Miss Kathy to lead. This is Stephanie's mom. And she's a gift from heaven. She loves Jesus. And I'm going to have a mom lead us while our team prays for those who lead worship in the body of Christ. And, I mean, this is what you do. Uh, You're part of a church or ministry team, and you're serving in that way. I want to invite you down right now. And I want to ask our team to pray for you. I need the... uh, I need help with catchers. And team, I want you just to release a blessing. Release the grace of God. Ushers, I'll need help. Make sure it's just very orderly. (laughs) 
And as Jeremy said, everyone in their seat, you're a priest. You're a royal priesthood. And as Miss Kathy leads the room, I, I want you to ask the Lord, listen, listen, to anoint you to minister to Him. It's the greatest treasure in life. Once you receive prayer, you're welcome to go back to your seat and just sit in God's presence.
out his arms to all of us this entire night has been a Holy Spirit night led of the Spirit and I want to make room at the altar now true worship is wholehearted devotion to Jesus at the core worship is mentioned when Abraham offers Isaac there was really no music involved but it's the heart of worship and with every head bowed and eye closed I want to open the altar to everyone under the sound of my voice. Miss Kathy's going to continue to minister. But I want to open the altar to you who just say in your heart, I need Jesus. Maybe for the first time or I want to come back. I want my heart to burn. I want to give the entirety of my being to the Lord Jesus Christ. The altars are open and I'm going to have the team pray with you.
it once, sing it again. Jesus, here I am, your favorite one. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? I need to know. Oh, Jesus, here I am, your favorite one. What are Fire, 
Turn.
quick and posture our heart to the Lord. I think we could have stayed here till the morning, honestly. When we have our own building, we will do that. Jesus, how can we say thank you? You've done so much, Jesus. We're in awe of who you are, Jesus. There's nothing more than we can give you but our worship and our thanks, Jesus, and our life. We love you so much. Oh, Jesus, please don't let this lift as we leave. Lord, anyone that came in, I just feel to pray this, that came in for the pastor's conference this week, Lord. Holy Spirit, let them carry this home with them in Jesus' name to their churches, to their families, God. Let this spread like fire in our nation and the world. In Jesus' name, thank you just for our heart of worship, Jesus. We honor you tonight. We know that we have been in your presence. We are so thankful. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you, Miss Kathy. That was just... This was family in the most beautiful way, wasn't it? I love you all so much. We will see you next Sunday morning and Sunday night. Sing it, church. Chains are breaking.
breaking this morning. Prophesied, come on. Messiah. Come on. Michael and Jess here, we are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that, we believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we wanna invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is gonna do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. We wanna take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. 
This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10:42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for His presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. 
The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May He be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.